Hey guys, on today's show, what are CTCSS tones? Well, for new hams, this can be some really good information. We're going to discuss that in a little bit more right here, right now on Ham Radio for non-techies. Welcome back to Ham Radio for Non-Techies, guys, where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for and pass your exams, get you on the air as a licensed ham operator as soon as possible. Now, today's discussion came about, I had a couple people ask me about this. Some new hams have gotten into, gotten their licenses, got their radios, and they're being just, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out how to get their radios to uh, be programmed, to use them on repeaters and so on and so forth, mainly on HTs or maybe like a, you know, a base station VHF, UHF radio. So I wanted to do a little presentation, and this is for new guys, and kind of explain what a CTCSS is. So let's pop over to my desktop, and I've got this presentation for you. So what is CTCSS, and why should you care? Well, if you're going to be programming your radio to use on repeaters, or if you want to talk on simplex to a friend or something like that, you need to understand what CTCSS is. And we're going to give you a little bit of background on that. So let's jump right into it. As soon as I... <laughs> there we go. Okay. So you got a license and a radio. Now what? Well, as a new tech, you probably have a radio and want to start using it. And ham radio, you're going to be bombarded with tons of new terminology. And when it comes to programming a radio for a repeater, you're going to see the term CTCSS. CTCSS stands for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. That is a mouthful. Don't say that five times. Uh, now, it was, re it was created to reduce the interference between stations operating on the same frequency or in areas where several repeaters may be overlapping coverage. CTCSS uses a set of tones at low frequencies that you can't hear, but the repeaters can, and that will help the repeaters respond when you hit down your PTT button if you have it programmed correctly. So what are these tones you speak of? Okay, well, if you look at the little chart on the right side here, the tones you set your radio to reach any repeater range from 67 hertz to 254.1 hertz. Depending on the repeater and the settings that repeater has, you'll need to know which tone that, that repeater uses in order to hit and communicate with others that might be on the same repeater. So if you want to, if you had a re repeater in your area, you live in a, in a certain town, there happens, to happens to be a repeater there, you want to get on there and be a part of the, be a part of the action, uh, you're going to have to get into your radio, Figure out how to, you know, figure what the frequency is and so on and so forth and get the, get it programmed correctly so you can actually talk to the repeater and the repeater can hear you and then retransmit you out to other people. Okay, so what am I talking about here? Well, in the example on the right, we'll see a car and the car is going down the road. We're going to assume he's got a mobile rig in there, maybe maybe an HC. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not there. And he has a radio set to a certain frequency at 100 hertz tone. The repeater on the left, repeater A has a CTCSS tone of 77 hertz, whereas repeater on the right has a CTCSS tone of 100 hertz. The repeater on the left, when he hits down the PTT, that signal goes right through, doesn't phase it one bit, does, it ignores everything. He's not even reaching, he's not reaching that repeater because he, does he doesn't have the proper tone set up in there. However, the repeater on the right side, repeater B, is set at the same tone as he is and the same frequency, and therefore he's now able to communicate with anybody who's on that repeater. That make a little more sense. So let's keep going here. So what info do you need and where do you find it? Now I've talked about this before in other videos. I did a video back on a repeater book and how to do other stuff with your uh, programming, your radios, finding repeaters in the area. The three main resources you're going to want to pay attention to are the ARRL's repeater directory, the R Finder app, and repeaterbook.com. By the way, these are all on my website, hamradiofornontechies.com. On the front page, I have all resources for all kinds of ham radio-related apps for your phone, for both Android and iOS, as well as links to other stuff that'll that'll lead you to uh, this this information. And I'll also just for you know the heck of it, I'll go ahead and put down the uh, the links down the bottom of the description of this video. So there's three things you need to know to program your radio for a repeater. And number one is gonna be the frequency of that repeater, obviously. Uh, two is going to be the offset. Three is going to be tone or CTCSS. So if you look in the picture on the right here, I have three arrows. The first arrow on the left is pointing to a frequency for the radio or for the repeater you want to reach. The offset is in the middle there, uh, negative 0 0.6 megahertz, and the tone is set for 123.0 hertz. So 
With that being said, let's move on. Hold up now. <laughs> There's a new term I just introduced to you guys, but I don't know if you caught it. Offset. What the heck is offset? Okay. Offset simply means the difference between a repeater's transmitting and receiving frequencies. You might listen to a conversation on a frequency of 146.940, but with an offset of negative 600 kilohertz, you will transmit at 146.340 when you hold down your PTT button. Does that make any sense? It should. Hopefully it does. Simple math. 146.94 minus 600 is 146.34. So there you go. So activate your through your radio menu the tone function. So go on your menu of your radio. There should be a tone function. And, and different radios can be set up different ways. Baofeng's going to be different from Wushun. Wushun's going to be different from uh, from uh, Yesu. Yesu's going to be different from ICOM, so on and so forth. They're all going to be somewhat similar. Consult your manuals, or I'd say go out and hit up, you know, Google it. Use one of your free Google searches and find out how to program my radio and put the make and model in there, and you'll find 10,000 pages on how to, how to program your radio. Anywho. Go into your radio's menu, go to the tone function, select CTCSS tone from the list of, um, or from the list that uh, when you go to repeater book, you'll see the, the the information you need there and match that tone to the one you want in your, in your, in your, uh, in your radio and save it and you should be good to go. The way to test it now, the way I would test that, if you have your radio all set up, you just hold down your PTT button, and for me, I'd say this is Kilo, Kilo India 5, November Papa Lima. Can I get a signal check or a signal report? Or, hey, this is uh, this is K, KI5 MPL. Signal report, please. And somebody will come back to you. If you're, if you're hitting the repeater and somebody can hear you, most of the time someone's going to be sitting there monitoring that. They might have their, their radio on all day long, and they will come back and say, hey, I hear you 5x5, five five, I hear you 5'9, you're coming in good. They'll give you some kind of, some kind of report to let you know you're hitting the repeater. And, you know, that could also kick off a conversation. You make a new friend, so it's a win-win, right? Um, so, yeah, if, you have somebody, if, you have, if it's all programmed properly, you'll get a confirmation somebody heard you. Congratulations. So in conclusion, knowing these simple things are going to make a world of difference to a new ham operator, and it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're diving into ham radio. Now, one other thing you can use, I, I didn't mention this before until now, you can also use CTCSS tones on simplex. So say you don't want to use a repeater, you just want to program your radio for a specific just frequency, you can set a CTCSS tone on your radio for that, Give that information to, say, a buddy across town that you can that you can actually reach. I mean, remember, there's line of sight with Simplex here. you got to have lots of power and high antennas and all that kind of crap. But you can set up on a frequency a specific CTCSS tone, and then you guys can kind of talk back and forth to each other, and nobody really nobody else will really be able to hear you or communicate because you're on your, kind of your, own, your own little private tone there. So uh, that's another cool little thing you can do with this. So, you know, it, it's... Just part of the experimentation, part of having fun with ham radio. Anyway, guys, I really hope that this uh, helped out. If you're a new ham here, this is probably good information. I haven't seen a whole lot of other people discuss this, uh, not at least not in a simplified manner. I mean, I, was, I know this is really quick, a lot to absorb, but it's super simple. And once you get it, it's one more thing you don't have to worry about. Now, as you move up in your ham radio adventure or career or whatever you whatever you choose to call it, you're going to learn a lot more stuff. You're going to, you're going to reach or be uh, introduced to a lot more terminology and a lot more things in ham radio as you go further on. If you happen to get into general, you go get upgrades and get your general license and you start getting an HF, you got a whole new world of stuff out there, which I promise you, if you're just a tech now, you're one of those guys like, I got my technician, I'm not going to be anything else. Trust me, go get your general. I promise you, you're going to have a load of fun being a general because you have a whole new world opened up to you now. And, you know, of course, there's new radios. I talked about this in my, in my uh, one of my uh, last videos on, you know, uh, tools for new hams. But it's going to open up new radios to you, new frequencies, new uh, activities, all kinds of fun stuff you can do. That just not, it's just not going to happen with, uh, with uh, a technician. I mean, unless you want to stick on 10 meters, when, but 10 meters is very volatile. Sometimes you can get on 10 meters, sometimes you can't, depending on what the propagation is like and what the uh, solar cycle is doing. But now we're coming into a new solar cycle, so things might get a little bit better there. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. 
If you are new here or you've never seen my channel before and you just found this video, please consider subscribing. Click on the little bell down below so you can be notified when I do new videos. And, you know, I try to put new videos out on a, on a regular basis. I'm working on a secondary channel right now, which has nothing to do with ham radio. Uh, but I think you guys will enjoy it. And when I'm ready to launch that and, uh, and uh, uh, announce that, I'll let you guys know about it. Until then, guys, this is Ham Radio for non-techies. My name is Scott, and we are clear.